What is wind power? Wind energy is the energy of the sun converted into kinetic energy of air molecules. Simply wind energy is a kind of solar energy, the energy that will be available to us for as long as the sun and our planet will exist. People learned to use the energy of the wind in ancient times. So, already in ancient Egypt, the wind was used to grind grain, and in Babylon and China, to drain fields. Finally, in the 20th century, the wind began to be used directly to generate electricity. Supporters of wind energy claim the solid advantages of this approach, they note the low cost of operating a wind farm, and the fact that wind energy meets all the conditions necessary for classifying it as an environmentally friendly production method. However, opponents of wind energy find disadvantages in it. Moreover, if some of them are insignificant in comparison with the harm caused by traditional energy sources, others force us to seriously think about the future prospects of the wind industry. Let's start with the simplest ones. For example, many people think that windmills sticking out here and there spoil the view of the area. Therefore, neighbors may oppose the construction of a wind turbine, this is called alienation syndrome. In addition, the propeller blades make noise during operation, which annoys those living in the neighborhood, while small wind turbines, often installed near housing, make more noise, their rotation speed is higher than that of large turbines, and they are closer to the ground, and the lack of consent of neighbors to install a turbine can put an end to your plans to get energy from the wind. By the way, neighbors may have quite rational reasons to dislike the wind turbine. Thus, it is believed that turbines create interference that degrades the reception of radio and television broadcasts. In addition, many are negatively affected by the constant flickering of sunlight, interrupted by or reflected from the blades. At a certain frequency of flickering, some people even have epileptic seizures. Wind farms have more serious disadvantages. Do not forget that wind is an unstable source of energy. The strength of the wind is very changeable and often unpredictable which requires the use of an additional buffer to accumulate excess electricity or duplicate the source for safety. If we talk about small generation, then even the best examples of autonomous wind farms can provide regular production of only a small amount of electricity. In addition, small wind turbines do not work in too strong winds, and a thunderstorm, hurricane, or snowstorm can damage such a turbine. All this leads to the fact that if small wind farms pay off, then for a very long time. However, even with a big wind power, not everything is so simple. Despite mass production, the cost of building a modern wind farm is high. At the same time, wind farms, as a rule, extend over vast territories and are located at a distance from the consumer, which creates additional costs for energy transportation. Storing excess energy generated by wind turbines also requires additional solutions, batteries or converters to other types of energy. That is, in order to receive free wind energy, you first have to pay well, because the wind power plant has a high initial cost. In addition, the wind blows differently in different parts of the earth at different times. During the construction of wind farms, preliminary research and development of a wind map is necessary, which increases the cost of such a power plant. Proponents of wind energy constantly emphasize that, compared to the harmful effects of traditional energy sources, the impact of wind energy on the planet's ecology is negligible. But there are risks. First of all, windmills pose a threat to winged creatures, birds and bats. Some researchers argue that wind turbines force some species of birds to change their migration routes and those who do not, risk being killed by turbine blades. For example, in the United States, according to the National Academy of Sciences of this country, from 20,000 to 37,000 birds die from them annually. The reason for the death of bats is more complex, the ability to echolocate, as a rule, prevents them from hitting the blades, but they fly into the low-pressure area that stretches behind the rotating blade. From a sudden hit in an almost airless space, capillaries in the lungs burst, and the animal dies. Finally, there is a version that wind farms also harm people. So, many living nearby complain of constant noise. Wind turbines do generate noise comparable to that of a car traveling at 70 km per hour, which causes discomfort for people and scares away animals. Another unexpected feature of wind power plants manifested itself in the fact that they turned out to be a source of rather intense infrasonic noise that adversely affects the human body, causing a constant depression, strong causeless anxiety, and life discomfort. As the experience of operating a large number of wind turbines in the United States has shown, neither animals nor birds can withstand this noise, leaving the area of the station, that is, the territory of the wind station itself and adjacent to it become unsuitable for life. American pediatrician Nina Pierpont says that the proximity of wind turbines causes migraines, dizziness, anxiety, tachycardia, pressure in the ears, and nausea in some people, as well as impairs vision and even digestion. 
She even identified the so-called wind turbine syndrome, the clinical name for a number of symptoms that are observed in many, but not all, people who live near industrial wind turbines. According to the doctor, problems are caused by a violation of the vestibular system of the inner ear by low-frequency noise from wind turbines. Simply put, infrasound. Low-frequency turbine noise stimulates the production of false signals in the inner ear system, which can lead to dizziness and nausea, as well as memory problems, anxiety, and panic. Infrasound, due to its long wavelength, freely bypasses obstacles and can propagate over long distances without significant energy losses. Therefore, infrasound can be considered as a factor polluting the environment. Thus, if wind turbines generate infrasound, they are still not a clean source of energy, since they pollute the environment and it is much more difficult to filter out infrasound than the ordinary sound. Installed sound filters do not allow to screen it completely. However, the wind turbine syndrome is not officially recognized. Pierpont's critics say that the book she wrote was not peer-reviewed and was self-published, and her sample of subjects for research is too small and does not have a control group to compare. Many experts claim that the term wind turbine syndrome is being spread by anti-wind park activist groups and some studies explain wind turbine syndrome by the power of suggestion. To be fair, it should be noted that the same arguments are given in response to criticism of more traditional forms of energy, for example, nuclear, which are opposed to wind energy. However, despite the criticism of the syndrome, people very often complain of headaches, insomnia, ringing in the ears, which are associated with wind turbines. It is not for nothing that animals disappear near the wind farms. More research is needed to identify real threats there are even more serious concerns. According to some studies, deploying wind energy to at least 33% of the current global electricity generation would result in worse climate impacts than doubling the atmospheric carbon dioxide. Meanwhile, according to modern scientific concepts, a doubling of the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere will inevitably cause truly catastrophic climate changes and mass extinction of species. How did scientists come to such conclusions? The fact is that each wind turbine creates a wind shadow directly behind it, an area in which the air is slowed down in comparison with its natural speed in the area. That is why wind turbines at wind farms are placed with significant gaps, otherwise, two close neighbors will reduce the efficiency of each other. If we cover the entire earth with wind turbines, the researchers believe, such a power system could generate huge amounts of energy, but at this point, as climate modeling suggests, its effect on global winds and, therefore, the climate became would be very harsh. Let us recall that it is the wind that is responsible in the world atmosphere for the transfer of heat from hot, tropical parts of the globe to colder, high latitudes, a decrease in their speed, which is inevitable during the rotation of wind turbines, leads to a drop in the intensity of such heat transfer. In short, theoretically, the too rapid development of wind energy can lead to an increase in average temperatures in summer and a drop in winter. This means an ecological catastrophe on a planetary scale. It is difficult to say whether this is true, however, in my opinion, even the slightest suspicion of such a negative impact on the Earth's ecology requires additional research. Perhaps we are not seeing the dawn of wind energy, but its apogee, after which the wind energy will wither and be forgotten. In its latest report, the Global Wind Energy Council enthusiastically wrote that the share of wind energy in the global energy market is growing at a frantic pace following the publication of data that more than 54 gigawatts of clean renewable wind energy were supplied to the global market last year. With statements like this and the inevitable photographs of wind turbines in every BBC report and in airport advertisements, you might have the impression that wind power is a major contributor to global energy generation today. You will be wrong. So far, its contribution after decades, no, not even centuries, of development has been negligible. Can you guess the closest whole number to what percentage of global energy consumption was wind power? Write your answer down in the comments. It is zero. That is if we take the nearest whole number, then the energy obtained from the wind practically does not exist on Earth. Wind and solar panels provide less than 1% of the world's energy requirement, even when added together. From the International Energy Agency's expert analysis of key trends in renewable energy, we see that wind energy covered 0.46% of global energy consumption, while solar and tidal energy together accounted for 0.35%. Remember, this is total energy, not just electricity, which makes up less than a fifth of all energy. The rest is made up of solid, liquid, and gaseous fuels, which take on the main load in heating, transport, and industry. These numbers are not hard to come by but they don't figure in energy reports from untrustworthy lobbies. 
Their trick is to hide behind the claim that about 14% of the world's energy comes from renewable sources, implying that it is solar and wind power. In reality, most of it, three quarters, is energy from biomass, mainly wood, and a very large share of this is traditional biomass, brushwood, firewood, dung, which are burned by the poor for cooking. Poor people need this energy, but they pay dearly for it, getting health problems from inhaling smoke. Even in wealthy countries that are flirting with subsidized wind and solar power, a huge proportion of renewable energy comes from reliable renewable energy sources, water and wood. Meanwhile, the world's energy demand has been growing at about 2% per year for almost 40 years. Between 2020 and 2021, again according to the International Energy Agency, it grew by almost 2,000 terawatt hour. How many wind turbines would have to be built every year if they provided the energy demand only in the amount of this growth and no more? The answer is about 350,000 pieces, since a 2 megawatt turbine can produce about 0.005 terawatt hour of energy per year. That's one and a half times more than has been built globally since governments began pouring taxpayer money into this so-called industry in the early 2000s. At a typical wind farm density, very roughly, 50 acres per megawatt, so many wind turbines would require more land than the British Isles and Ireland. Yearly. If we had continued in the same spirit for 50 years, we would have built up wind farms on every square mile of land equal in area to the territory of Russia. And this is only to meet new demand, and not to replace the entire huge amount of energy obtained from fossil fuels, which now provides 80% of the world's demand. Don't let the hope that wind turbines can get more efficient over time. There is a limit to how much energy can be extracted from moving fluids, the bets limit, and wind turbines are already close to it. Their efficiency, load factor, to use the engineering term, is determined by the blowing winds, which change at their own will from second to second, from day to day, from year to year. Since the mechanisms are already quite perfect, the problem is in the wind itself, and we cannot change this. Wind is a low density, changing flow of energy that humanity has long for reasonable reasons stopped using it for critical transportation and mechanical power. It's just not good enough. With regard to resource costs and environmental impact. Direct consequences of the construction of wind turbines, the death of birds and bats, the subsidence of concrete foundations deep into the soil, is already bad enough. Environmental pollution, for example, in Mongolia, remains out of sight and attention. The mining of rare earth metals to make turbine magnets generates toxic and radioactive waste on an epic scale, which is why the phrase clean energy is such a cruel joke that ministers should be ashamed whenever it comes out of their mouths. Further, it gets worse. Wind turbines, apart from fiberglass blades, are mainly composed of steel and concrete foundations. They require 200 times more material per power unit than a modern gas turbine combined cycle plant. Steel is produced using coal, not only to smelt ore but also to add carbon to the alloy. Cement is also often produced using coal. Clean renewable energy mechanisms are products of a fossil fuel economy, mainly a coal economy. The 2 megawatt wind turbine weighs about 250 tons, including the tower, nacelle, rotor, and blades. All over the world, to melt one ton of steel, about half a ton of coal is required. Add another 25 tons of coal for cement production and we get 150 tons of coal per wind turbine. So, if we need to build 350,000 wind turbines a year, or a slightly smaller number of large wind turbines, just to cover the growing energy needs, we will need 50 million tons of coal a year. This is about half of the total production of the European Union. The point of considering all these numbers is to show that it is absolutely pointless to even think that wind energy can make any significant contribution to world energy production, not to mention the reduction of harmful emissions, without destroying the planet. As the late David McKay pointed out many years ago, arithmetic is against such unreliable renewables. The truth is, if you want to power a civilization with less greenhouse gas emissions, you need to focus on converting energy production, heating and transportation to natural gas, whose recoverable reserves, thanks to horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing of rocks, are much richer than we could ever have, or dream. Also, of all fossil fuels, gas produces the least amount of harmful emissions, so the intensity of environmental pollution from creating wealth may even decrease while our wealth continues to grow. Great. And let's invest some of our growing wealth in nuclear power and fusion so that they can replace gas in the second half of this century. This is a constructible, environmentally friendly future. Everything else is political manipulation, counterproductive, like climate policy, and worse, leading to more and more shameless robbery of the poor in order to make the rich even richer.